Good morning. Welcome back to another vlog. Today is the first day of 22nd grade for me. It's the first day of the fall semester 2023. I started this PhD program in the fall semester of 2018 and thinking about that is absolutely wild. So the theme of this vlog is going to be, it's not my first rodeo, uh, because it is indeed not my first rodeo. So I'm going to take you guys along with me as I continue working on my dissertation and working on some materials for a teaching award that I can hopefully tweak and modify and use as practice for the job market, which I will be entering, manifesting in the fall of 2024, so a year from now. So let's just get into some things. You know the drill? Go to light the pumpkin candles to set the vibes in my office for some writing. And I have some ice cold water in my water bottle so I can, you know, stay hydrated. So I should probably introduce myself in this vlog. Uh, my name is Sarah. I'm a PhD student at Indiana University. As I mentioned, I am in my sixth year. I study English, specifically rhetoric and composition. This semester I'm on fellowship, so I'm not teaching, I'm not taking classes, I'm not preparing for exams. I am simply working on writing my dissertation. Really simple, easy task that I should be able to complete in no time. That's obviously sarcasm. So my dissertation is looking at how we can more effectively teach writing by looking at embodied practices of writing specifically as they take place through multimodal composition. And one specific example of multimodal composition that I'm looking at is vlogs. And I'm also examining student work. I have an IRB in it for a class that I taught this past summer. And I'm applying theories from Helene Sixou's idea of feminine writing to understand how multimodal composition, specifically through vlogs, challenges ideas of what writing even looks like, challenges systems of ideas about the linearity of writing, and that writing is a mental disembodied process. And my goals for this project are that it can highlight the ways that we can make composition and writing at the college level more accessible and also more inclusive for people from diverse marginalized backgrounds. So women, people with disabilities, people from all different genders, races, socioeconomic statuses, etc. So that being said, this semester I am planning on spending two to three hours every morning working on my dissertation and I had a late start to the morning because I wanted to do some journaling and I wanted to get ready for the day and since it is the first day of school I am finding myself much more in a reflective mood so I think I'm gonna flip things around and actually work on some stuff for that teaching award because I need to I should have already gotten started on building my teaching philosophy statement and I feel like I might as well capitalize on this sort of like reflective mood and start writing a really rough draft of that. And then I could get into dissertation thinking a bit later today. So let's start with that. The first part or the hardest part of writing is always like getting started. It's a lot of anxiety there, but I have some notes of what direction I want to take it in. I had what I felt like was a smart idea when I was in the shower yesterday. So I like hopped out of the shower, jotted it down on my phone and now let's get to work okay it has been about an hour and i wrote the opening framing which was like i don't know 300 words ish for this teaching statement and it was spooky that was like an ad i was getting because i was looking up synonyms for engagement not like married engagement but like students engagement anyway i wrote to that paragraph and i feel good about that i also had to reread an article that i was using as like the framing for it it is from or it's the intro to women's ways of making by goggin and rose and it's just a really smart book i'm a little bit concerned that i'm framing it with like this rhetorical idea but they draw on aristotle and i feel like everyone in an english department knows who aristotle is even like beyond english a lot of people know who aristotle is i hope I mean, not that he's that great, but like, I hope for the sake of my writing, they do. Um, anyway, I just have to get through to the English department before I could even like think about outside of that, which I don't even know if I'll get through to the English department. So yeah, I'm a little bit nervous that I'm using this rhetorical framework, but again, I'm trying to keep in mind that I want this to be useful for like the job market beyond. 
um, just this award and anywhere I will apply we'll know who Aristotle is because it'll be for like rec comp positions. So yeah, I feel good about that and I wrote a little plan for where I want to go next. I need to read back through all of my OCQs, which are the end of course questionnaires that students fill out at the end of every semester. And I'm dreading that a little bit because it's like a lot of information, it's kind of overwhelming. And I actually scheduled an appointment with IU's Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning so someone can help me come up with a strategy for how to do it. Um, I've never made an appointment with them before, but I feel like that could be like a really useful resource that I haven't drawn upon enough. And they, I don't know, will just help me make it feel like more manageable. So I might wait for that appointment before I dive more in depth, but I have a plan for like the outline for the rest of this teaching statement and some other like theories and frameworks that I want to use. So yeah, I feel like I'm in a good place and now I could spend some time on this stuff eating some leftover chickpea and spinach pasta for lunch gonna squeeze some lemon on top it's leftover so it doesn't look that great but i promise it's really good it's a recipe from new york times it's really simple just like chickpeas salt pepper rosemary some heavy cream and it's really easy yummy vegetarian pasta and of course watching some kumo girls i'm really struggling with some motivation to go back upstairs and sit at that desk and work on this stuff which i knew would happen if i don't do the this stuff right away it's really hard to do it later in the day so i'm gonna give myself a fun little drink and then i'm gonna force myself to get after it thank you can i actually get a stroll thank you I was working pretty frantically because I was like, ah, oh, I really want to finish before this Zoom meeting that I have at 6.30 as like an orientation for the writing center that we have like back to school meeting every fall. And I didn't get through everything I wanted to get through, but it was good because it made me get like a lot of work done because I had that time crunch. And I'm currently working on putting together a brief history of sort of like the turn to multimodal composition and intertwining how it relates to embodiment and how it relates to vlogs. So I have pinned down a bunch of key dates of key articles and key books about multimodal composition within like comp studies and have been like revisiting those, pulling out like key contributions and stuff like that that very much felt like i was prepping for exams again but i didn't have multimodal comp stuff in my exams list but that's another story for another time and one way that it's like really useful to know if something is like a key article or not or to find those key articles is looking at like source books so critical source book all the ones in like rec comp sort of look like this they're like multicolored, and like one for community writing is like brown and black one for like disability studies is like blue and black so source books are really good edited collections like this one are really good it, because they have intros too that contextualize everything and then sort of like resource books or handbooks for teachers and these link it to like pedagogy obviously those are really really good and in the back they also often have like whole bibliographies of like advice or suggestions for future reading so that's my not my first rodeo spiel about that and i also found an article that looks like it's gonna be really useful that is from 2016 it's like the multimodal turn and composition studies it's nine pages by chris narola and i'm like where was this i needed this weeks ago and so basically i ended off with leaving myself a little to-do list of all that i want to read for tomorrow and hopefully i can start like writing this section for tomorrow so i'm going to quickly eat a little snack because we have pizza being delivered because megan and i don't have time to cook because we're on the zoom meeting and uh then hop on the zoom meeting so in the words of emily kaiser let's go okay wash my face put on a little pimple patch and finish that meeting we had like quite a few guest speakers so it's one of those like camera off situations for the second half after we all like caught up shared a fun fact about our summer 
and now I am going to go over to my neighbor's house with Megan to watch the Bachelorette finale. I'm pretty sure Don's gonna win and they're gonna make Joey the next Bachelor, which I'm not mad about because I really like Joey, but I guess you never really know what's gonna happen. I haven't read any spoilers, so we'll see how it goes. It is 11.25. It was a three hour finale of The Bachelorette and it ended exactly how I thought it would, but still somehow it was so hard to watch and I feel so heartbroken for Joey. So sad. But I'm excited that he'll be The Bachelor because I think he'll be a good Bachelor and you could already tell he's had some media training. So anyway, I'm going to read my book. I am currently reading Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez and I really like it so far. I don't have too much more left, maybe like a quarter of it left, but it's like a really easy read. And then I'll move on to the final Harry Potter book, which I'm like a lot of mixed feelings about. First time reading it, no spoilers. And yeah, so I will check in with you guys tomorrow for day two of the first week back to school at my first rodeo. I woke up at 6 30 today not on purpose I was trying to wake up at like 9 because I stayed up so late from the bachelorette viewing but I don't know Pirelli had other plans my body had other plans so I tried to fall back asleep for like an hour ish and then I was like eh, whatever I'm up so I got up took a shower made myself a nice little breakfast watched an episode of Gilmore Girls and somehow it's already like 9 30 now actually it's 10 o'clock so I need to get to work so we're back with you know the trinity of books that I was just reading yesterday and I left myself some notes I want to finish up an article that I was in the middle of read another article from this multimodal source book and then hopefully get to doing the actual writing of this literature review section. I made a cup of coffee this morning or like I poured some like iced coffee, but I don't know, it wasn't tasting right to me. Coffee has been like sometimes giving me the ick lately and I hate that for myself. So if I'm having a hard time focusing because I need caffeine, I might go get a little matcha from Starbucks. Yeah, I'm gonna need a matcha. I feel like I can't even concentrate. Okay, it is a lot later now. It is like 4.45. I worked for, I don't know, like two-ish hours this morning, which is not much, but I got all the reading done and I got the whole sort of like outline and everything sketched for this new section of writing that I need to add on to the chapter of the disc. So I feel really good about that. And I was planning on starting the writing later today, but I just started to feel like absolute garbage. So I took like a two hour nap and I really hope I'm not getting sick. I hope it's just because I didn't sleep well, but I just like was really not feeling right. But I did, before I fell asleep, finish up this book, the one that I talked about yesterday, um, Part of Your World. It was really cute. I give it four stars, but I don't know, I could see a mood in which I would have given it five stars. <laughs> it's just like, it's not as good as like a Taylor Jenkins to read romance in my mind, but it's like a really good cheesy rom-com if you're in the mood for something like that. Probably being very clingy. And then I just got back from going to my friend Joanna's house to drop off some cookies for her and like some other stuff that I had to give her. And oh my goodness, it is so hot. Her house is 0.5 miles away, but in the drive of those 0.5 miles, like the chocolate and the chocolate chip cookies got so melty because it is so hot. Let me see what the feels like temperature is because it's just like nuts right now. 91, but there's an excessive heat warning and it feels like 98. I swear it feels so much hotter than that. It feels like it's like 110. It is miserable out there. So I have about an hour before I have a Zoom meeting tonight from six to eight, another sort of training for the writing center. I have had a meeting yesterday, I have a meeting tonight, and then I have a meeting tomorrow from six to eight. 
which is a lot of meetings, but it's back to school training. It's pretty easy, low stakes, and I get paid for it, so that's nice. And so I think I'm just gonna spend this next hour not doing like writing, cause I don't wanna be like in a writing flow and then have that interrupted. But just doing, I need to set up like a Canvas page for something for the Writing Center since I'm leading a dissertation writing group. And maybe looking back through some of my OCQs to try and find like patterns to talk about in my teaching philosophy statement and as part of that like award application stuff. So let's open up that laptop and let's get to it. That's Megan just so taught hot. her course. She's so cute. Updates to come with the Santa. <laughs> Starbucks because I still don't feel right and nothing sounds good to eat except for the spinach feta egg white wrap from Starbucks. So let's go get that and let's go to CVS and pick up some at-home COVID tests even though I really don't think it's COVID. Better safe than sorry and I really want to have some on hand because all of our old ones expired. This is literally some 3D printed food but I love it. I can't be stopped. And a venti cup of water. Not COVID which is good, but you know, like I mentioned, wanted to be safe rather than sorry. So today was supposed to be when I started writing because I've been doing cycle syncing, talked about it a lot in my last two vlogs, basically when you sync up your high energy days based on your menstrual cycle, and I am matching that to my writing process. So I'm actually in the ovulation stage of my cycle, which is when you're supposed to have some of the highest energy. And this is when you can do like really intense workouts and stuff like that. But I obviously don't feel super high energy. So that's okay. Still a form of listening to my body. I am just going to continue reading a little bit more for school. I am reading this YouTube book about like the history of YouTube and how it came to be. I've had that book for a while, but I really only skimmed through it. So today I'm going to spend some time, a couple hours at least, reading through it. And hopefully tomorrow I'll have flushed whatever this is out of my system and I will be feeling good. I plan on drinking a lot of water, got some natural supplements from Amazon, and yeah, I'm gonna make sure I get a lot of sleep. Got a lot of sleep last night and that was good. Work done reading this book for a little over an hour. Not a whole lot of work, but I did something and it ended up being a lot more useful than I thought it would be. I thought it was gonna be like more of a history of YouTube. But the chapter I read actually talked quite a bit about vlogs, so I took lots of notes for that. And then I started reading the final Harry Potter book. I've only read the first chapter. And I've been putting this one off because I'm really sad that the series is coming to an end. This is my first time reading them, but it's time. I really want to finish well before Halloween so I can watch all the movies. And it is almost 6 o'clock, and I have a 6 o'clock Zoom meeting the third night in a row for the Writing Center. Pirelli! You got a bee chat? Oh my gosh, she looks so cute. <laughs> this is too much. Do you hear how purring is yes. so loud? <laughs> Megan sent me a Snapchat of her snoring earlier today. Did you hear how loud it was? Yeah, that was a lot. 10 o'clock, just finished watching Below Deck Down Under with Megan. And all of a sudden they started releasing like two episodes a week of Below Deck. And they did it with Sailing earlier, like a couple months ago. And I'm not mad about it because I love that show. But I'm going to wash my face, put on some PJs, and go to bed. But it like feels like Christmas Eve because Starbucks just announced that they're releasing pumpkin tomorrow. And I'm like going to fall asleep dreaming about my cold brew with the pumpkin cream cold foam. It's going to be so good. And Megan's going to get it on a chai and we're going to, we're just going to have ourselves a little, a little moment in the drive-thru. 
and I'm hoping that I feel good tomorrow so I can get some writing done. I did like quite a bit of thinking when I was reading through that chapter, like making a lot of connections between readings, which is good because I feel like in what I have actually to write, I need to connect like two, definitely two areas and I need to like gesture towards a third area. I can explain more about this tomorrow, but I also feel like I have narrowed down the scope of my project in really like helpful ways for my thinking. I was getting like really just tripped up thinking that I need to talk about like vlogs from so many different perspectives, but I need to remember that I'm focusing only on how they can help us teach writing. And there's a lot of other like really cool theoretical and rhetorical aspects that I want to take, but I need to remember that I'm focusing on the teaching or writing. And the second way that I've narrowed it down, I need to check in with my advisor about this, but what I'm thinking is narrowing down rhetorical awareness to just audience awareness. Because I'm focusing on embodiment and that allows me to talk about like audiences and audiences' bodies and audiences' embodiments and alongside like the author's body <laughs> embodiment or like creator or rhetor, whatever you want to call that. But that was actually a question that came up from the fourth member of my committee in my prospectus defense. He was like, your prospectus continually uses this phrase rhetorical awareness and you don't need to tell me right now what it means, but like you need to like think about what that means. And I was like, oh yeah, it's like, you know, just awareness of the rhetorical situation. But that means there's a lot of moving parts. So I think I feel good about narrowing it down to just audience awareness and as much as I've tried to like find scholarship about like defining what rhetorical awareness means I haven't been able to find like a key point about that even in like the council for writing program administrators they set like outcomes for what to expect in like first year writing they never use the phrase rhetorical awareness which is very interesting they use something more akin to audience awareness I need to look up exactly what it is so I feel like if I'm focusing on the teaching of writing, those outcomes could be good things to keep in mind. And yeah, I feel like this helps me narrow things down. It feels more in line with like other things that I've read in that realm as well. Anyway, let's shut off my brain. Let's go to bed. You already know where we are in the Starbucks drive-thru, 9.06 a.m., <laughs> ready to get some pumpkin drinks. The feels like temp is almost 90 outside, but it's okay. We pulled up to the Starbucks drive-thru and we were like, oh, we're nervous. We thought the line was gonna be like crazy. There's like no one here. This is so weird for Bloomington. It is a little early, it's 9.06, but still, just like. I'm honestly like. I am beside myself. Oh, they have pumpkin loaf too. I knew they had another pumpkin one. Oh, I saw TikTok that baked apple croissant is good. Oh, maybe I'll try that. Oh, I got a pumpkin. I want the pumpkin cream cheese muffin. Then can I have a pumpkin cream cheese muffin? I'm so sorry, we are already out of those, unfortunately. <laughs> That's okay. Do you want to do I'll do the pumpkin loaf. Okay, do you have any pumpkin loaf left? I do, if you want to warm it up. Yes. Yes, and can we have two slices of that? How are they out of the muffin already? Also, since they made the chai a drink, it's cheaper now. Oh, how much was it? It was like the price of a normal latte, like five twenty-five, instead of like your seven dollars, basically. Well, I cut the sub the milk substitute, which helped. But it was still it's still it a dollar still cheaper, like I think. Six or seven, like yeah. Slay. Slay. Pumpkin cream cold brew in hand, and we are going to start writing today. Gonna crack open that laptop and just get the words flowing. A little over an hour later and I wrote like 700 words and then of course as I felt my steam running out I do what I always do which is leave myself a little note of where I'm going next and what I want to come back to so I don't forget where like my head was at at that moment but I feel good about what I wrote because it's not just like free writing or brain dumping it's actually like usable text that I know I can copy and paste and put into the chapter so that is good I think that I was able to do this writing pretty painlessly because I had planned everything out and made like a bulleted list of all the key moments that I want to talk about for this sort of like history of multimodal composition and because I didn't leave a long period of time between when I was doing all the reading and when I'm doing the writing. That's one thing that I'm really bad at and that I want to get better at. I find that I will spend like three weeks reading 
and then I'll be like, okay, now let me write. It's really hard for me to write about something that I read three weeks ago, even if I leave like really diligent notes for myself. It's just difficult. I have to read then write like ideally within the same day, ideally at the very least within the same like five days, I'd say. So that's a tip that at least works for me. Um, and that's why I feel like writing papers at the end of coursework is so hard because you have to like go back and then like reread everything in order to write that seminar paper, at least, at least for me. And it is 11.37. I have a meeting at noon with my advisor. It's only a 30 minute meeting and it's not about this disc. It's to talk about doing a teaching demonstration on Monday because I'm not teaching this semester, but he said that I should have a video clip of in-person teaching to include in the dossier applications for this award. So I recorded all of my online classes to be able to edit those into a video because you need to have a 10 minute video as part of this dossier for the award but he suggested having some like in-person teaching as well. So he's given me the opportunity to come into his class and do a little teaching demo. I think I'm going to talk about like design principles and I'm not sure how long the lesson has to be. I don't know how like interactive he wants it to be. So I haven't planned anything until I meet with him today. And yeah, I should probably eat something before that. And I don't know, maybe like look like I'm not wearing pajamas. Back in the car gonna go to Kroger and get a few things just because we have like not really been making dinner this week just because we've had meetings from 6 to 8 p.m. on Zoom which is like peak cooking time so we've just been like making quick mac and cheese or like yesterday I made tortellini and pesto just like quick stuff so we're gonna get some stuff for Dan for the next couple days and some snacky stuff and then I'm gonna place a pickup order at Jimmy John's for a sandwich for me and Megan the meeting with my advisor was good he was like this is how he always is he's like if you're gonna do something like why wouldn't you just be like the best if you're gonna do something why wouldn't you just be like excellent and I'm like because not all of us like are excellent some of us have to try really hard okay like me and I don't know if I have energy for all that so yeah we're just gonna have a clash of opinions on that and it is what it is It is 4.47. I just finished my second little work shift for today, working on my dissertation. And I wrote another like 500 or so words. So today I've written over a thousand like usable words, which is really good for me. Uh, everyone's process is different. And I think that so far this cycle syncing method of like, working on actually producing the writing during the ovulation stage has been really good for me because I felt that I've had like high energy today and I need to like go 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 that could be the cold brew though <laughs> um but yeah I was just like in a clear headspace ready to write and that's good because if you write you know that there's nothing worse than not being in the mood to write and feeling like you're fighting a million different distractions while you're trying to sit down and write so Things are so far so good with this cycle syncing planning. And I'm gonna be done working for today. I feel like my brain is done and I gotta shut it off. That's one thing I've learned from being in school for as long as I have. When your brain is tired, there's no use in like pushing it to keep going with writing because it's all gonna be garbage. <sighs> it's a little after 11 o'clock. I am showered fresh this little guy is a drive me nuts but i'm gonna go to bed for the night and get on after some things tomorrow hello happy friday made it to the end of the week this morning i watched an episode of get more girl Gilmore Girls and then I said let's get straight to work on doing this lesson planning for 
the class that I'm being like a guest lecture, which sounds so much fancier than it is, on Monday so I can get the recording for the award portfolio. And I put together a really fun little lesson, so I'll show you guys really quickly. And then Megan and I are gonna like go to DSW and Ulta and just like have ourselves a little, a little afternoon as we take like a half day out of Friday. So I'm teaching a couple pages from this book, Recom Becoming Rhetorical, which I used in my summer class about sort of digital rhetoric and public storytelling through video. And I'm talking about the crap design principles. These are like really common. They're not specific to like rec comp, contrast, repetition, alignment, proximity, but I am making them more rhetorical and talking about how they relate to author and audience and purpose. And I'm using movie posters to do so. I'm talking about the Barbenheimer cultural moment. So first we're just gonna review the four principles and then I'm gonna ask students how this one poster is demonstrating principles of contrast in order to appeal to the audience and to demonstrate the purpose. And first we're going to talk obviously about like who the audience and what the purpose is about these movies and then how like similar branding is used in all these posters, what the purpose of that is, repetition, alignment, talking about how things are sort of like justified here, 7, 21, 23. And then I have the rule of thirds here where you can look just at the center and see how it's really focused. The top we see like just his hat. This is like following rule of thirds like to a T. Then we have proximity, like things are grouped together, like the actors' names all appear, the dates, and then leaving a bunch of like open blank space to give the audience time to breathe. And then I'm gonna give them the task of using these design principles to recreate a movie poster, either for Oppenheimer or for Barbie, and they have to make it appeal to the opposite audience. So I think that that will be pretty fun. And I spent some time taking all the movie posters and like cutting out or moving the backgrounds just so people could have like just Margot Robbie and just Ryan Gosling and um, just to make like the design process easier for them in class. Megan and I just got back from doing a bit more of a bebop than we anticipated. She's wearing her Gals on the Go shirt, which I wore of mine the other day. Uh, we went to DSW and it totally flopped, but we got our Starbucks, fifth day in a row for me. I, I need to fix that. And then I was like, let's just go to TJ Maxx because we could look for some shoes there. But Megan didn't find shoes, but I did. And then while we were over on that side of town, we we're like, what if we just like go to Sam's Club real quick and get some stuff? So of course I have to show you a haul. Got this book from Sam's, which is the second in the series of, why oh, can't I remember what the other one was called? Hmm. Uh, Megan got some peaches. These are the shoes I got. They're really cute on, and I feel like I could wear them with or without socks. They're a really good little fall shoe, I think. This is so cute, a little table runner. I love that. I think it's so cute. She got an Emily Gilmore sweater, and she got a little black like knit shirt. I guess that's it, but it's a fun time. Gonna end off the week with a cherry limeade poppy. Haven't had a poppy in a long time in this whole vlog. No wine glass. We have some dinner going. It's like a tofu, crumbled tofu with peppers and onions. It's to make like tostadas, but it's like, a, she said it's inspired by the Chipotle vegan sofritas. And Megan brushed these with oil, waiting for the oven to preheat, gonna pop them in. And hopefully they look like this. Saturday wearing a cutie little scarf in my ponytail today. It is almost three o'clock. Earlier today I went to the farmer's market and a cute little thrift market with Megan and our friend Joanna and I brought my camera and I meant to vlog more of it but it was so hot I could barely function. The feels like Tem said it was 90 but I swear it felt like it was well over 100. It was like pretty close to unbearable near the end. But I got two really cute little vintage dresses and we got a bunch of farmer's market goodies, corn, jam, bread, all of that good stuff. So I'll show you guys the little dresses. Okay, here's one of them. It is like a little mid calf below the knee dress. It has these really dainty cream flowers on this navy background, little bows on the straps here. 
just really cute a good simple dress i feel like i could teach in this with a cardigan or throw a sweater over in the winter time just i don't know fun and dainty and girly and here is the second one it is beautiful it is this blue dress with like gold flowers full length ties in the back i have no idea when i'm gonna wear these dresses i have so many dresses in my closet with a tax on so i think i just need to force myself to wear dresses and feel a little bit overdressed because i just love them they're so easy they're so fun and thrift markets are cute okay it is about 6 30 now i took a shower took my sheets out of the dryer and made my bed and had myself a nice little reading session with Harry Potter. You know, one of those where you're like drifting in and out of sleep. It was just, it was a good time. It was what I needed after being in the hot sun today. But I'm going to pop in this memory card to get to editing. So I will go ahead and end off the vlog here. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, let me know what type of vlogs you want to see in the future. If you have any questions, any content ideas, all of that good stuff. Follow me on social media, subscribe, turn on post notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!